Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, hello everybody and welcome to my channel. I'm finally going to talk about my conversion to Islam. Uh, so it's not that complicated of a story, um, but I would like to talk about what it's like being a convert and um, just give some advice to other converts. Um, Insha'Allah it will be beneficial to you. Um, obviously everybody is different, um, but I'll let you know what has helped me and what has hindered me in my path to Islam. Uh, alhamdulillah, I have been blessed to be guided by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, I am so blessed to be a Muslim. Um, converting to Islam is the best thing that has ever happened to me. Alhamdulillah. So, um, I was born Jewish. Uh, my mother is Jewish, so I was born a Jew. And um, my father was a Muslim, but uh, if you watched my previous video, um, the the vlog, the short vlog on a little catch up, um, you know my father passed away in October. Um, but you know uh, we come from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, and to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala we return. Um, so in <laughs> may Allah Subhanahu wa Taala have mercy on my father's soul. Um, but anyway. I was born Jewish. I was raised by my grandmother. Um, my mother and my father didn't raise me. Um, and my grandmother raised me as an atheist. And so I didn't know, I didn't know that people even believed in God. I didn't know that the, about the concept of God until I was 10 years old. And someone asked me, because my name is very Jewish, they asked me, are you uh, a Christian? And because uh, I'm sure that their parents perhaps had told them that I was probably Jewish. Um, and so they were asking me curiously, are you a Christian like me, you know, like them? Um, are you a Christian? I said, well, <laughs> I was confused because I only knew Christian as a name for a boy. And I said, no, I'm not Christian, I'm Ezra. <laughs> and so I was confused. I didn't even know what he meant. And um, subhanAllah, my, the, the way I learned about God first was my best friend um, named Sarah um, at the time. This was around when I was 10. Um, she was a Muslima. And her father was a Muslim from Pakistan, and so being friends with her, I had my first exposure to a any religion, which was my first exposure to Islam. Uh, alhamdulillah. Um, uh, Sarah moved away when we were 12, I'd say, um, to another state, and so we fell apart. Um, then when I was 17, I started going to synagogue. It's like a Jewish mosque, like a Jewish church. Um, and I loved it. And I started going three times a week. I would go for chorus. I would go for the Friday night services. And I would go for um, the Hebrew school. I would volunteer at the Hebrew school with the children. And so I, that that started when I was at 17. I didn't admit that I believed in God astaghfirullah. I didn't admit it until I was 20 years old. So for three years, I was going to shul, to temple, to synagogue, um, three times a week, and I was denying my faith, denying my faith. But um, I kept experiencing, you know, all these spiritual feelings while I went to to worship God and I finally had the courage to say yes this is my creator alhamdulillah and then so fast forward I, I go from being a reformed Jewish girl to a <laughs> um, uh, I made what's called in Judaism teshuva, return. Um, I became Orthodox. I became an Orthodox Jewish um, woman. And um, Orthodox Jewish women cover their hair when they're married. But I really felt called 
by God um, to cover my hair. And so I wore the Jewish style of tichel, it's called, or mipahat, um, depending on what, uh, what Jewish language you're speaking. Um, and I, I wore it all the time. Um, so from, I think I started wearing tichel when I was 20. Um, so I have been covering my hair for four years. So when I was 22, I was in a horrible relationship. Astak Fidullah, haram relationship. We were living together and he was very emotionally abusive to me. Um, I don't want to get into that too much, but I knew I needed escape. And so I turned to God and, uh, you know, that, that was at the time that I was becoming more and more Orthodox Jewish. And around that time on Instagram, uh, I met a sister named uh, Rivka Sajida. She's got a channel on here. Um, and uh, she was, we both liked uh, fashion blogging. And so we started talking and, you know, we became very friendly. And on my own, without, she didn't say anything to me. She never, you know, there's no compulsion in religion, according to our Holy Quran, subhanAllah. Um, but on my own accord, I started reading my favorite version of the Quran um, in English, which is the study Quran. Um, if you don't know this about me, I am a religious scholar. That's I have my bachelor's degree in religious studies. So I wanted to study Quran so that I could have the context of revelation. I could have the academic perspective of Islam. I read the Quran and I didn't expect it to change my life. You know, astaghfirullah. I know better now. <laughs> but I read the Quran and the Quran changed my life. The Quran spoke to me in ways that no other scripture ever had before. And so I read the Quran and I thought, well, that was really meaningful to me. And so I asked my friend Sajida, Rivka Sajida, um, who was also a convert who converted from Judaism. Um, I asked her to teach me. I prayed three times a day as a as a Orthodox Jewish woman, and uh, so I asked her to teach me how to pray salat. And I started performing salat gradually, not not five times a day at first, but I let Allah Subhanahu wa Taala speak to me, and I spoke to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala for the first time as a Jew and subhanallah it changed my heart completely it was salat it it, it it was the Quran yes the Quran led me to salat led me to my personal connection to our Lord and that was one of the most amazing feelings I, I it's indescribable the change that came over me the, the, the clarity that came over me was just amazing, subhanAllah. So then I, I'm a scholar, so of course I want to know more. I want to know much more about Islam. And so last year I read this book. I've read it twice now, um, which is Muhammad, uh, sallallahu alayhi Peace be upon him. Excuse me. My Arabic is not very good. It's uh, called Muhammad, peace be upon him, his life based on the earliest sources. Um, it's an incredible book based on the hadith about the life of our prophet, peace be upon him. Um, and I was just blown away with love for this incredible, incredible messenger that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had sent to us and by our prophet, peace be upon him, his purity, his beneficence, his, you know, his devotion to God, just plain and simple. Um, and I 
I wanted to change my life. And, <laughs> but the thing about changing your life is that you can't do everything at the same time. As much as you want to, as much as you want to jump in and be the perfect Muslima, it doesn't really work like that. And it's unrealistic to expect yourself to live up to that expectation. And the way I think of it is you're setting yourself up for some failure when you want to do everything at the same time. Um, my recommendation is to focus first on the five pillars of Islam. Learn your five pillars. Perform your salat. Your salat will increase your iman. It is the most important part of your deen. Um, and it's your connection. It's your personal time to connect with uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All your success, all your blessings in life, everything comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so there's, there's really nothing more important than performing salah and worshipping God, acknowledging God, remembering God. Um, and yeah, so I would recommend starting with salah and... Um, you know, if you're not ready to pray five times a day, pray once a day, pray twice a day, and build the habit, because it's possible. We can all build habits, subhanAllah, um, and become better Muslims. And then as you learn about Islam, you know, as you read the Quran, as you learn the Hadith, and you learn <laughs> what is islamically allowed and what is forbidden what is a uh, halal what is haram um and what is in between what is recommended what is not recommended um you'll change as a person gradually and it's a beautiful transition and i'm not finished with it i'm i'm still going through it i'm still in this journey i'm every day trying to become a better muslima trying to perfect my salat not just perform it but perfect it you know feel it in my heart um make niya you know have intention pray with consciousness about god and um i you know i've been using my dikr beads to perform um, after Salat, um, to perform Dikr. And now that my father has passed, I pray every time I pray Salat, which is, I, I pray five times a day, Alhamdulillah. I've been very successful at fostering that habit, Alhamdulillah. Um, I pray for my father. Um, I pray for my friends. I pray for my, my Muslim friends to always be guided and blessed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to receive his mercy. Um, and, you know, I pray upon the Prophet. I pray upon for mercy for my father's soul. You know, I pray, I, of course, you pray for your family. You pray for those you care about. You pray for peace on earth. You pray for everything that is important to you. You pour your heart out to God in these moments. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the all-hearing <laughs> and here's every prayer and um, so for me that that is um, one of the most beautiful parts of being a Muslim and it is what drew me into Islam is that um, Salat just became such an integral part of my life um, integral part of my life um, Alhamdulillah so that's most of my story. Um, I've been working on becoming a better Muslima. A year ago, I stopped doing my eyebrows, alhamdulillah. And um, actually, just recently, I stopped doing my nails, alhamdulillah, um, so that my wudu can be proper. Um, and yeah, so every day I'm making little steps, little things I can do, you know, whether it's saying Bismillah before you do something, whether it's saying Alhamdulillah for that parking space that um, that you didn't think you would get that was so close to your apartment, um, you know, saying Alhamdulillah when you're stressed to be optimistic and to be thankful for all the other things you don't have to be stressed about. Um, I think there's always something to be grateful for and I, I really think that um, remembrance of Allah has changed my life and made me feel so much better. 
um, this video is going on long, so I'm going to cut it off here. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to drop them in the comment box and uh, or message me on Instagram. I'll leave my Instagram handle in the description. And uh, Allah Hafiz and Salam Alaikum.